Hi everybody, this is Chris. And this is Matt. And this is not a review of Might and Magic. Finally, a Might and Magic non-review. Yes, we're going to talk it's... about it, book club style format. Because we played it yes. for a month, didn't we, Matt? We kind of played it for three months? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Several months. Yeah, We've managed one... to drag this one out. I was going to say, our format is, we pick, you know, if you're joining us for the first time, we pick a game, we play it for a month, we also have a short game we do in the middle of the month. Uh, we spent three months on this game, and I think it needed it. Yeah, if you're me, it needed even more. It's an we'll old school RPG. That. If you're doing it right, 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 you could spend like a year or so on this and just have fun. Yeah. But this is, we've been doing this show now for five or six years, mm -hmm. seven, some six, number of years. Six, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we have managed to not do any Might and Magic games. We've done several Ultimas. We did Wizardry. Uh, we've done many franchises. We did gold a uh, Gold Box game, at least one. Mm -hmm. But we have not gotten into Might and Magic. And now we finally are... And I am quite pleased yeah. about that fact. And there's going to be a bunch of people who are like, why didn't you start with Zine? Or why didn't you start with Seven? Or what? I think to really appreciate the series, A, you need to start with the first. And B, mm -hmm. I like the first more than those other games. And I'm sure we'll get into why a bit yeah. here. And I'm a little alone on that. But I, I definitely do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this came out in 86, mm -hmm. you know, so it's early. Um, one Probably one of the noteworthy things about it was it, it was one of, if not the first game, to do outdoor labyrinths. I don't think Bard's Tale 1 had outdoor labyrinths, if I remember do correctly. Do you count the town? Do I count the town? What do you in mean? Bard's Tale. No. You don't count the town as an outdoor labyrinth? No, not really. No. It's a different it's a different feel. It is, that's fair. Like a, a wilderness. You're thinking we're like a it's specifically right. a wilderness 3D labyrinth. Right, with biomes and all that business. And like I don't think you got that before Might and Magic that I could find. Someone might know better but i th this is the first real like okay now you're out in the wild and you're going between towns kind of game yeah I, I feel like that's true i'm trying to think of one another one that would do it because they did start happening right around now yeah definitely um and it was put out by john van Kanigan, and he was having trouble finding a publisher so he just made his own to get it out which i think is awesome yeah good on him yeah he founded new world computing just to distribute this game and then mm -hmm. it went on to do a bunch of other stuff mm -hmm. um the fate of new world Sad. computing yeah it got sold to 3do in 1996 for one point or i'm sorry 13 million dollars yeah. uh you know which is a bargain and like no one knows what happened to 3DO. It's just like one of the great... It's it's like Amelia Earhart. It's just like no one knows. Oh, no. We know. We 100% know. They tried to no. push that 3DO machine. Right. Right. That thing was a disaster. It was, it was too expensive. It did so little. And then they ended up like parting it out for other things. And Right. It's when... It's that brief period where we all thought full motion video was going to be the big shit in gaming mm -hmm. and 3d was like yes we're going to do it and we're going to charge like a thousand dollars right. for the yeah. console or whatever it was just a disaster but i mean no one ha knows what happened to them after that because they just kind of like <laughs> vanished like well, i remember they the were 3D. destroyed out yeah basically that mm -hmm. collapsed them but um, od oddly the uh the ip for might and magic did not go to 3do it went to ubisoft Ubisoft now owns the Might and Magic. Ultimately. I think yes. Ultimately. 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 Right. So I don't know if Ubisoft then bought 3DO. I, I don't know that whole thing. But 
that's who owns it. They got it for one point three million dollars. Uh, I want to see. If it was because it was parted out, or did Ubisoft just buy all of 3DO? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, you look at that. I'll I'll give the rundown of every Might and Magic game in the year it came out. Okay. All right, and then we'll circle <laughs> right. back. So this Might and Magic Book One, Secret of the Inner Sanctum, came out in 1986. It also came out on the NES, which is kind of like I don't like to gatekeep, but. You know, the NES versions of these role-playing games are never quite the same. Uh, the sequel to this came out, uh, Might and Magic 2, Gates to Another World, in 1988. Then in 91, Isles of Terra came out. Uh, Might and Magic 4, Clouds of Zine. Uh, in 1992, Dark Side of Zine in 1993. And then if you install those both, you get like the conglomeration World of Zine. Uh, which they then released, mm -hmm. um, and you get some extra zenery with that. Oh, <laughs> zenery? No, <laughs> no, you don't like that joke? Oh my god! I, I've been working on that joke for three months. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like the joke. I do know that it hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Might and Magic Six. I might be into it. Heaven. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you're, you like it. It's okay to like it, Chris. <laughs> Might and Magic Six, The Mandate of Heaven, 98. Uh, For Blood and Honor, Might and Magic 7 in 99. Might and Magic 8, Day of the Destroyer in 2000. <clears throat> Might and Magic 9 in 2002, Writ of Fate. And Might and Magic 10, Legacy in 2014. That's the whole spiel on Might and Magic. Yeah. That's a lot of games. It's a lot. And then you got the heroes. and Right. Yeah. The spinoffs. And... Yeah. I think it's interesting that I think a lot more people probably know of the heroes of Might and Magic more than the main series. Right. And to me, heroes seems like that thing that came after the games, even though it kind of came out in the middle of the games. Middle, yeah. Yeah. I always thought that was strange because, you know, I know Might and Magic. Well, and as someone who liked the Might and Magics, the Heroes games never felt connected. Mm -hmm. They're like real-time strategy. We'll probably play it we'll at some point. We'll play them eventually. Um, yeah. They're, they're fun, but just like the world doesn't even feel the same to me, really. No. Uh, well, we'll talk about that towards the end, too, because I don't know how far you got or what you learned about this game. But we'll talk about the world because that's an interesting part of this series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Namco, Ubisoft, and Microsoft carved up 3DO. Okay. And at the time, the head of 3DO, and this was something I've heard from some interviews and some stuff like that, it was Trip Hawkins. And people were like, we would realize that 3DO system was a disaster. And we'd go talk to Trip. And by the time we left the meeting, we were so hyped because he was just so good and believed in it so much that you couldn't walk out of there and not believe in it. And then you get home and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Trip, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> this isn't going to work. And you go yeah. talk to him again. You'd be like, yeah, actually it is. We're going to do this. And then you get home and you're like, wait, no, it's not going <laughs> to. Trip was wrong. Trip Hawkins was wrong. He he was just enthusiastic and charismatic, mm -hmm. but the three DO story is written. Yes. Well, and one of the reasons three DO bought them, bought New World Computing, is they were trying to get the money to do one of the first MMOs. There was almost in several things a might and magic MMO that almost happened and then didn't. It just didn't. Just yep. didn't. Yeah. I that would have been great. The best. Oh, no, I think it's for the best. Really? Yeah. I mean, then, yes. I, I would love to have a modern MMO set in this. Hmm. I, mean, I mean, I probably wouldn't play it because I don't play those things anymore because I'm old and crotchety and I don't have time. Well, um, I think the purpose of MMOs has gone away. Yeah. And I think the purpose of MMOs, the thing that made them work in their golden era was that they provided something for gamers that we didn't have anywhere else. And that was 
a unified place to collect and play the game Mm -hmm. with discord with reddit with twitter and all these other social media ways where you can connect to other people who are interested in your game you don't need that massive multiplayer to make new friends and meet new players right like if you watch people and and the phasmophobia reddit and such they will tell you don't just go to an open lobby go to discord make some friends there and play with them because that's going to get you a good time just jumping into randoms and that's what an mmo used to do is it gave you that opportunity to meet these people and now who needs it along with a sense of persistence but that is not necessarily tied to the massive multiplayer part of it well that's interesting you know the the rise of the instanced massively multiplayer games like it, it makes so much sense on paper but you lose the chaos and and just like the kind like like going to a dungeon in ultima online mm-hmm. when there's a bunch of people and like getting a lich encounter when everyone's down there trying to get a lich encounter was like special and fun and it sucked 80 percent of the time but that 20 percent of the time when you were in the right place at the right time it was great but that's the thing do you want to spend 80 percent of your relaxation time with sucked so that 20 percent can be great well, not anymore, but in <laughs> you know, 1998, 1999, fuck no, yeah, it, this it was is a good the, time. This is the video store situation. If we all remember them fondly, but like, would you like to do that over Netflix? No, I don't want to do that over Netflix. Totally, right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I'm kind of glad it didn't. I can't imagine what this would have looked like as an MMO. Yeah. Like, I, I could think... picture how Ultima got to an MMO, but this, I'm like, sure. I don't know what you you would have done it i mean maybe it'd have been awesome maybe i'm full of it i don't i think it would have been fun like i like the world i like i like the different biomes i think it's cool i mean i have some feelings about the some details of the world in here like but we can talk about that one more bit of trivia historical trivia okay and then i want to talk about the world because we keep like dancing around it let's just dive right into that before we right. hit the other stuff. Conversation starts mm-hmm. at 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, John uh, Van... Canigan? Canigan. Canigan. Uh, Canigan. Man, Went I on just to head up Command and Conquer brand at EA. Really? That's what he did after uh, making millions selling New World Computing to 3DO. So that's very cool. Like Because mm-hmm. those are iconic games that probably we will also play someday Mm -hmm. and have not not recently no all right so my beef with the world Mm -hmm. is just how gritty and not g-r-i-t-t-y g-r-i-d hyphen y it is i'm down with a grid map system But then you get out into the overworld and it's a grid of grids. And it, the, I don't, I mean, obviously behind the scenes, that's what you're going to have to do. But it's so uh, salient in the game world how much of a grid of grids this is that I found it a little bit of a bummer. (laughs) I I don't like it. And like the big thing about this game i think to understand is how non-linear it is yes because they give you the tools to bounce all over this world and and i started playing it not remembering that like it's gonna be a linear game i'm gonna go to the first town i'm gonna map it i'm gonna do the dungeon under the town i'm gonna go outside i'm gonna find the next thing and the next thing Mm -hmm. but really no like, that's not really... I mean, that's a way to play this game. But but you can't. Yeah. You have you, to bumble around and see what's over the next hill. This... The, the gameplay of this is way more like you were saying. It's not... You're not going to go step A, step B, step C. Even Bard's Tale had. You do the sewers... 
then you do the catacombs, then you do the castle, then you go back and you do this tower, then you do that tower, and you do them in this order to unlock sort of what you need for the next thing. Mm -hmm. This has some things that uh, gate you off in ways, like you'll need keys to get into certain places and you got to find those keys before you can get into them. Right. Or you have to trigger some puzzles to show before you can find something that unlocks it. But most of the game will let you go anywhere and get stomped by whatever's there or not if you don't want to. Right. No, I want to talk about that gritty thing for a bit. Because, I mean, it is sort of disconcerting. It, it feels like almost like there's little playgrounds of these 16 squares hold these monsters and these 16 squares hold these monsters and mm -hmm. almost like you know the world was manually designed rather than organically grown you know almost what i mean almost like that yeah almost like that except uh spoiler alert in 3 2 1 uh the world is a giant spaceship Right, and that is a lovely. I, I I love when these old games just like mash up fantasy and sci-fi like that. Like, hey, you're wandering around, and here's a crash spaceship for no fucking reason. Like, here you go because I wanted to put it in my game. Nowadays, people would be like, "Get this fucking spaceship out of my Lord of the Rings!" Like, I don't I, want it. I used to hate it. I have become to love it. I've come to love ray guns with my dragons and sure. just the, cause why not? Like I, I don't have the hangups of fantasy has to look this way anymore. Right. Totally. So yeah, I, I was wondering if you knew that the world was a spaceship. Yeah. Varn. Mm -hmm. And it like stands for something I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you like find that out later in the series, which is, you know, that's cool. Well, yeah, like the, the end of this game, you go to the next spaceship and mm -hmm. follow the villain from this one to there. Right. What's and that villain's name? Shellum? Cor Sheltham. Yeah. Shelton? Shel Sheltham. Shellac? <laughs> Shellac. <laughs> Something? Shellshock. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sheltham is the villain. And Sheltham, yeah. My thing with this game and that whole story is... It could not be in there, and I would have the same level of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool reveal and everything, but... But, like, if you took the villain out and you just had it be, like, you've discovered it's a spaceship and someone's deemed that means you're worthy to go to the next spaceship when, you're, when you've raised to a consciousness level of understanding where you are, you're obviously mm -hmm. smart enough for the next world... Mm -hmm. like they could have taken the villain out and i would have had exactly as much fun yeah because the villain feels insignificant it's just completely inconsequential to everything that happens yeah which brings me to some thoughts on on plot and lack thereof in this game mm -hmm. it very much dumps you in and like i think it's i think it's noteworthy that if you crack the manual open for this there's no paragraph of story. There's no, like, you know, it's secret of the inner sanctum and you like figure out that you're trying to find the secret of the inner sanctum, mm -hmm. which follows. But yeah. then this kind of like plot develops with, uh, 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 Shelton. Shalom Shelton <laughs> and, uh, but you're very much just like tossed in this world and the initial kind of plot things that you get are like inscriptions on statues and then it kind of opens up when you beat the first dungeon he's like take the scroll to the next guy mm -hmm. and you're like oh ex you're excited you get a little excited because you're like i this is it this is the plot i'm gonna get it and then you bring it to the guy and he's like can you bring this to the other guy <laughs> <laughs> okay why not i'll just bring cart this fucking scroll around uh the spaceship world for you it's and no that's what i mean like if you had had might magic one secret of the inner sanctum and then just put like a paragraph of lore on one of the statues of 
somewhere in the world is an inner sanctum. Many heroes have sought for it, and you'll never, you know, no one's ever found it. Who knows what's inside? And then shut the fuck up about it. Yep. I'd have had just as good a time when I opened it up and discovered what it is. I didn't need any story to get me there. Right. It it doesn't it doesn't need it and that's good because you don't get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember finding all of a sudden when I was playing this back in the day I'm like, "Okay, who's sh- the Shelton guy? Why is he mad at me? What's going on here?" Right. And then I map out this maze to see my name is Shelton spelled in walls and I'm like, <sighs> "All right, whatever. Here we go." Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the 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 grid on grid uh game world because like the game probably my ex- i would have figured it out much sooner mm-hmm. had i found the fucking leprechaun in the first town because the the leprechaun in the first town will teleport you anywhere for a dollar or for a gem or whatever i'm just moving to where we see some actual movement here since we're talking about stuff like that yeah yeah um Maybe we can get us outside. And that instantly opens up the world. I was so resistant to the teleportation in this game. Like, when you first start exploring outside of the town, mm-hmm. one of the first things you find if you, like, make a series of turns is a teleporter. And I was like, fuck no, I don't want to do it. But that's not the attitude to have with this game. No. This game is all about... Uh, Push this button, pull that lever, see what it does. Right. If you get killed, not the end of the world. You reload in town, you lost whatever XP you had between here and there, and whatever. Yep. So, I I was not in the right headspace for this when I started it. I can see that. It takes a bit to get there. Um, but once like, you get there, once you realize, this is just... I want to fully explore this dungeon. Mm-hmm. I want to fully map out this square i want to fully explore this thing and see all the things inside it and see what that means and how it interacts with something on the other side of the world later Mm -hmm. Uh, that's awesome yeah yeah but that's the mindset you have to be in for this right and once you get fly man it's just like you 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 can go pretty much anywhere between like, I fly mean, the... and teleport, walking is done. Like if you have a map right. and you know where stuff is, right? You just fly to the place that has it. You teleport to where it is. You go in. You teleport to where you want to be in the dungeon, and you walk out. Right. It's less exploration, more about finding the right grind to get to the next level, so you can fly somewhere else and then do the thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I I did like the grind in this game. I, I found it I ground way more than I needed to oh, yeah. without exploring because again, because I was resistant to making those huge jumps before I had uh you know, I had yeah. my next thing. I'm gonna pause this real quick because while you said the game world's not gritty. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That actually is more my problem with it, is like that di- that attempt at dither that they put on all the outside walls, mm-hmm. I'm gonna air quotes the walls, mm-hmm. rather than something smooth looking, I think they were trying to like go for more depth or more graphics or more texture and it didn't quite land. It just looks... Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's not like breathtaking when you get outside you know it looks very much like the inside Inside, but the walls are trees yeah yeah and it it just it was kind of disappointing like you finally get outside and you're right here we go and they don't even do like a blue sky or anything it's still the same black and black yeah it makes me question why did they say the towns were underground as part of the lore with the dragons if the outside doesn't show a sky anyway that's a great question i I don't don't know i don't know why they bothered with that that doesn't Mm -hmm. oh whatever 
Okay, so that, that's my sort of gripe with the outside. There might be more. Uh, I'm going to take us back here to character creation. Although, I want to talk about grinding while this starts spinning up again. Yeah. Because one of the things that makes grinding work in this game is the speed at which you can blow through a battle. Mm -hmm. Like, once you have something overpowered, you no longer feel like you're wasting a ton of time on trash mobs. Right. Yeah, you can just speed your way right through those mm -hmm. combats. You can hold Control A down, and it will have everybody do attack or defend. Mm -hmm. And it'll just cycle that as fast as it can go and get you through the combat. Yeah. It's a great feature um, because combat, you know, doesn't scale. Right. You, you And the world's so, like, you can go anywhere that you're going to find yourself going back to places that, and you're, that like, you're three too powerful rats are attacking for. me. I'm level 60. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Done and done. Mm -hmm. There, There is a distinct lack of animation in this game also. Uh, yeah. And the combat is text based. You get a little, you get a little bloop of the monster that you're fighting, which I enjoy because I like those graphics, mm -hmm. but then it's all, it's, it's all text. text. It's a little wizard, a little menu. It's, uh, and that is one of the things that struck me as I played this game. That so much of it is text. Mm -hmm. And so little of it, other than the maps as graphics. That I feel like I should like it less because of that than I mm -hmm. do. And I can't figure out why. Like, I can't figure out what it does that makes me go, a wall of text is an acceptable combat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Screw it. I know. The only, the only, the thing that I felt like I wanted was mm -hmm. when you, when you find something in the world, I would have liked to get something more than a, a bleep from my PC speaker and a, a little bit of text. It yeah. still manages to be kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. But, like, you did all the work to show me drawings of the monsters. I would have liked to get a drawing of the dude at the desk, like, giving me the scroll or something. I don't care if it's not animated. A drawing Just, of a like, fountain. let me... Yeah. Yeah. Let me step into the square and see something. But, yeah, I didn't mind the lack of animation and graphics in the combat at all. No. I don't liked the combat interface. It tells you a lot of information. It's somewhat customizable, you know? Well, and the combat does something that, like, the Bard's Tale and Wizardry combats don't do. It manages to feel at least a little strategic mm -hmm. with the way I should actually try to find a combat here. Yeah. Let's get to that. Yeah, it does feel. Uh... All right, here we go. And I'll pause on that when we get to it. Yeah, it, it feels it feels rich, like there's different speed of your players that affects the order in which they attack. So if you like want your mm -hmm. cleric to go last, you can deliberately take a slow cleric, which is I like I, I had a slow cleric not on purpose, mm -hmm. but it like worked out for me pretty well. Right. Because then everybody gets dinged up during the round. You're like, okay, who am I going to heal? What am I going to do? Who needs it the most? Yeah, and you, and then at least you know who's probably going to die next mm -hmm. round. And I like the thing for me is that in the upper left corner, that one, two, three, four, five, six for the party order. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the front three are attacking. Right. It varies. It varies, and you can get flanked or surprised or monsters can rush the party or if everybody in the front goes down mm -hmm. then everybody in the party becomes vulnerable right and so you can never fully trust that your mage is protected right yeah it's a good combat system yeah and so you have to have like i need bows for when i'm not in range but i also need melee for when i am and mm -hmm. I will say that I wish in the auto combat that if your character is not in range and but has a 
ranged weapon that they would shoot. They don't. They just defend. That's kind of a bummer. I thought they shot. I don't think they shoot. I think they just defend. I'm not 100% sure, but I seem to remember him not. So here's one of the things that I seem to remember on the Commodore that they do shoot. Mm. But I thought it interesting that on the PC, I think you're right that they don't. Oh. Did you play this on the Commodore? Back in the day I did, yeah. Yeah, I think we both played the good old games, like Mm -hmm. Might Magic Collection version. The Commodore version of this isn't... This game is, because it's text, Mm -hmm. you're not suffering playing one version over the other. Yeah, yeah. You know, normally I'd be like, well, the Commodore's going to be better, this is going to be better, that's going to be better. No, they all feel pretty close. Mm -hmm. They feel pretty close to each other. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that, you know, you've got different amounts of people and the enemies who can be in range as well. Mm -hmm. And spells, there are some spells if you cast on enemies in melee range will hit your party too. Mm -hmm. Which is a great sort of, okay, what's your strategy here? Because some only affect melee, some only affect range, some you can do either, but there's penalties to it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does a lot with yeah. without a, a UI to speak of. I do feel <laughs> the lack of like graphical stuff maybe is What did you let's just ask this. What did you think of the spells in general? I liked them. I thought it was a good combination of buffs damage and overworld spells i I liked all that um i you know i i of all the menus that i wish i had i would have liked a spell menu instead of like type the level type the spell number from the sheet Mm -hmm. that you printed out you know that that's can be a little annoying because i like to be able to just see what i can do without having to look away uh, but overall, like I liked the magic, the gems at first I was like, Ooh, I'm not going to like these gem situation, but you end up with so many gems. It doesn't really yeah. matter. So that didn't bother me. Um, the only time it was an issue was like the first few levels and you don't really need them for that anyway. Right. Yeah. It can bite you eventually, but I mean, if you're paying attention, it's not going to. Yeah. What did you think of it? I think like i i like the spells up until about uh, like fifth level sixth level um because what ends up happening is like the spells help you get more and more and more powerful Mm -hmm. and then there comes a point where new spells are different but sometimes less powerful and almost always more restricted Mm -hmm. like clerics have a bunch of spells that can blast everybody and all the enemies but only outside yeah only in outdoor combat uh there's a mage spell the dancing sword that will hit every enemy Mm -hmm. but for much less damage than your fireball or lightning which scale with level and requires Mm -hmm. more gems right so i don't i don't know uh yeah but between that and the the menu system and me not wanting to refer to paper uh i found myself just you always using the same yeah two or three spells even even as i achieved more levels i'd like I'd level up, I'd go look at what I can do. Yeah. And then like maybe pick one or two. But but mostly it's three one, three four for the mage. And yep. like one six for the cleric for your power heal when you really need it. Mm-hmm. And everything else is kind of look it up as you need it. It's Yeah. Uh you'll do a lot of sleep in the beginning like I'm doing here, but Yeah. I don't know. I, I They lacked the punch at higher levels. You felt like you were getting really powerful and mages were becoming really awesome. And then he's like, whoa, 
player might have fun. You got to stop that. <laughs> right. You don't, you don't want to have a power fantasy, do you? Power you fantasy. weirdo. Uh, so your fighters end up becoming uber, uber powered. Well, once you get multiple attacks, multiple attacks is huge. It's that's such a, a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. It's satisfying to do more damage, but once you start like double. Right. Because, like, up to level 8, which is when I think you get your first second attack, um, which is a weird thing to say. When you're 8, you get your first second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's basically doubling your damage. And you've been adding through weapons and strength mm -hmm. up to that point where you're already doing, like, 20 points of damage. So doubling that is not a small number. Right. Right. Yeah. What did you think of the equipment in this game? Um, I mean, it, it was always exciting to get new equipment. Uh, the the limitations on who can use what made sense uh, for, mm -hmm. for the most part. I can't think of anything where I was like, no, I think a cleric should be able to use whatever. But um, it, it's very much bound to the town that you can find it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your relationship to money changes quite a bit as you yes. play this game also. Uh, so I didn't necessarily like that. I still, I, I like the experience of finding some awesome thing in the bottom of a dungeon. And I, I, don't, I can't think of any time that I really, like I found good shields and stuff in yeah. combat better than what I had. Mm -hmm. But there was no like, this is like awesome yeah, they never really have like a plus 13 two-hander or anything like that. It keeps right. it in like the plus two, like maybe three, I think, a couple times. Um, yeah. One of the things that was asked is, would I recommend someone look up the stats of items when they play? Or mm -hmm. just, you know, use the value of, of the item as a guide and the pluses? Mm -hmm. How about so before I answer, what, what's your answer on that? Do you recommend people look up the stats? Um, it depends on what kind of kid you are. If, if you're <laughs> if you're the kind of kid who likes a table and like wants to know where you're sacrificing in order to gain, I say go for it. I personally just used the value because I didn't really have preconceived notions about whether I wanted my knight person to have be two-handed or shield and sword like mm. i didn't go into it with a a goal so i just like equip the first guy the best most valuable weapon give his weapon to the second guy mm. blah 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 blah. you know what, well, what do you think yeah i mean that goes back to the toolbox analogy we did during the how to play game yeah like as a kid i'm like i don't know what a flame burge is but i want one with my because it sounds like it's on fire and then we looked up right. that it's a curvy sword, and we're like, hell yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll still take it. Still take it. I don't care what the numbers are. Uh, and you can see that the numbers are doing okay. Yeah. What I would say for anyone who's going to play this, uh, the numbers don't vary that much between mm -hmm. things. Like, especially in the beginning where you're going to have something that might be doing one to seven and another thing that might be doing one to eight damage. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the sort of levels of variation we're talking about here. Your, your min maxing is not, the equipment is not what's really going to bring that home for you. Yeah. The armor, you can see the numbers directly on the screen when you equip right. it. Either your armor went up more or it didn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just play with it. Have fun. This game is all about exploration. I would not... I definitely don't recommend uh, looking up the maps. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend looking up the equipment. But, all that said, uh, someone on the last video recommended Where Are We? Which is a tool mm -hmm. to sort of make this better or worse. Mm -hmm. uh matt 
I might recommend that for you. Because one of the things that happens is when you hit cast, up pops a list of all the spells you can cast. Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. And that's really nice. Uh, the auto mapping, I'm still a fan of map it yourself and do the yeah. drawing. There's something about that muscle of your fingers drawing the map that helped burn it in your brain. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, but if you absolutely positively will not play it, if that's the way you have to play it, then get that because at least you won't miss out on the game. Yeah, I, I liked mapping this. Uh, it was fun. Uh, and I you're right, like I did get a sense of where I was. And like anything with 2D walls is, to me is just like my brain does not want to map it. it, it <laughs> it's just like won't do it. Like, yeah. Uh, and it does have 2D walls even inside and outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know that's a personal thing that I don't care for. One thing that I, I, I don't really like the secret wall system. Oh, it relies heavily on the secret walls. All these eighties role-playing games do. And I really, that's not my favorite thing. Uh, that's hilarious. I know it, because I love the secret walls in these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, i mean you feel like you found something out when you find one but a lot of times they're just the secret walls will take you into a one by one area often with another secret wall and i don't like that well i mean i, I like finding a secret room or a magical leprechaun or whatever right i was gonna say gnome. okay but that's a different that's a different problem than the wall itself you're having a problem with what they put behind it. And I can agree with that to some extent. Like, we've got this prison area I talked about where there's a secret door that leads to a darkened hallway for some reason around the prison. And then another secret door where there's a bunch of monsters hanging out that cause all the other monsters to get harder. Mm -hmm. That is so this game. Right. Like, nothing I just said makes any narrative or logical sense right but it's fun i i, I think like f for me the, the thing it's not the the principle of it that bothers me it's it's how it's implemented i i'd have no objection to searching finding a secret door going through the secret door mm -hmm. finding a new room like that to me is okay um but i mean when you have to take a step turn, take a step turn to do that, that would be annoying. But um, I, I don't like just walking and then being through a wall with no feedback at all. <laughs> I find it disorienting. Uh, and again, like the the thing we learned in the when we played this together was you got to use that map spell anytime mm -hmm. you're like not you're sure confused. where you are. Do the map. The thing I liked about the secret doors. And I was thinking about that just before we started is in Bard's Tale, like early mid game, you get a spell that is not only gives you light farther than any other spell, but it reveals secret doors. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even have to search for them. They're just doors now. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> that is a weird choice. <laughs> like, why did we bother? What? Mm hmm this and this this was good. the other thing i want to say about spells is i don't feel like there's enough utility spells or That's interesting spells fair. that do interesting things beyond combat mm -hmm. there's, there's a some. jump and there's yeah you know some <laughs> protection spells and fly and water walk and so there's mm -hmm. some like exploration spells but not really not an identify not a mm -hmm. Well, there's an identify creature, but not an identify item. The, I know, see. As I'm saying this, I got to take it back. There's a duplicate item, which is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Because like, oh, I really like this. I want two of my people to have it. And there's a chance it destroys the item, but mm -hmm. a better it's chance fun. that you get two of them. <laughs> right. Save scumlet kids. Mm -hmm. Like you, know you want to. Yeah, that's how you play this. Yeah. So... 
Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there needed to be, like, Bard's Tale spoiled me with Levitate. and Well, there's a Levitate, but there's a little floaty carpet thing in Bard's Tale. And a magic compass. And mm-hmm. the eye that sees different things ahead of you in the dungeon. And mm-hmm. Yeah, Bard's Tale did that really well. I feel Bard's Tale had a lot of stuff that felt more than just combat. Where this... Even the duplicate spell is really just to give me a two items for combat rather than one item for combat. Like, I'm not using it to create food or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's a create food spell, but food, we should talk about food. Yeah. Because food is in this game, food sort of. Right. It's so cheap in the first city that you almost want to, when you need it, you almost want to, like, go back just to buy it there. Well, and with fly spell, why not? Yeah, right. Like, you like just get there. So you can carry forty rests of food. Mm-hmm. When you rest, that's how you get your hit points back. Yep. Or without heals, but it's how you get your magic points back. It's how you stuff like that comes. Back. You got to rest, and that burns one food. Um, to fill your food back to full, whether you need two or you need the full forty. The food shop in town will basically fill you up for a flat cost. Mm-hmm. In the first town, it's five gold. It's basically nothing at all. But then mm-hmm. another town is 250 gold. Right. It's like, why? It's not better. It's not better food. It doesn't do anything else. It just fills you to the same 40. I don't... Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I don't know what the gameplay thought was behind that i do kind of like that like you can't basically just go somewhere and endlessly grind at your limit you will have to like okay i've done everything i can i gotta go back to town sell some stuff off check my xp Mm -hmm. You you can overextend yourself into a dangerous area but it's not burdensome you're not gonna starve to death you're not gonna yeah yeah it, it's kind of an odd system but it it does you know it does what it's supposed to do right it's, a lot of this game to me was just like finding a good encounter to grind mm-hmm. grinding it rest grind it rest go back to town sign in at the inn yeah and, yeah uh, that's the loop <laughs> It, it remind there's aspects of it that reminded me of wizardry mm-hmm. and as you know i was greatly annoyed by a lot of wizardry yes i think that i don't like to be teleported i don't like to be spun around i just like i i need to know exactly where i am and exactly where i'm going you know mm-hmm. i i that drives me a little bit nuts and the same thing i think with the secret doors because like all of a sudden you're just like okay i'm just like somewhere else now and i don't i find that jarring i think one of the things we found too is you are actually not too bad with you know 2d walls if the camera pans on the turn that does you see the turn happen and you see the step forward and i'm betting through the secret doors too like if you see the wall get really close up and then you go through it you're like oh i went through a wall as opposed to I don't know if I went through a wall. Like, right. I don't necessarily know what happened. Yeah, that's very true. So, and I can get that. Like, there is, like, in this old game, is the wall teleporting? Is the wall turning? Are you turning? You don't necessarily know. Yeah, right. Right, and that's why they're kind of hard to watch, which is why I think we'll probably never do a, a stream of one of these. Right. You know, maybe... a someday we will but it's just like hard to keep in your head where the person is and these if you're watching someone play these if we do something like this it will be more a one or two off yeah like we'll do it because we want to show something specific or we're in the mood but Mm -hmm. we're waiting for something else to happen or come out or whatever yeah yeah um Normally, we would have done this stuff in order, but character creation, I want to kind of talk about, too. Yeah, I like rolling characters. 
it 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 appeals to something in me where just like i like i like to get a good role it releases chemicals in my brain when it happens like uh yeah when you get lucky and you see all the 18s come up right yeah that's great stuff but this game for the most part uh like there's certain stats that everyone should have mm -hmm. endurance speed speed unless you want a slow cleric which right I ended up with uh but like might intelligence yeah i mean you kind they're not like totally useless if you're uh the opposing uh, class yeah right right what did you think about it i think and this is why i wanted to ask you about it i think i am completely over rolling stats in computer games yeah it's The exhilaration I get, the little dopamine hit I get from, like, a bunch of 18s. On a pen and paper game where I know I'm not going to get to roll the numbers again, and I can't roll forever because the DM is going to be like, knock it off. Mm -hmm. Your next six is what you get. Stop it. Uh, there's some stakes to that. Right. That's true. Like this, it's you hold down a space bar and you roll until you get what you want mm -hmm. and like uh that death lord reloaded rickles added a feature where you can just roll until the just would you like to auto roll until the stats are where you want them and you just go yeah boop, and it'll roll and then it'll tell you how many rolls it took to get there, that's awesome that's which is time. i love that little passive aggressive sort of like I just saved you 500 rolls. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. that's what I did. Like, it's not like that changes how I'd play the game. It's just the quality of life. I don't have to sit there and roll, 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 roll. Skipped it. Ah. Roll, roll, that's roll, fair. Roll, roll. And like in a lot of these games, the stats aren't necessarily super important because they're so uh, dynamic as you play. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes we'll find ourselves saying, and don't, you know, later in the game, you're going to find so many fountains and things that yeah. raise your stats that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I, and I've had disagreements with people on the Bard's Tale. They're like, no, the, the stats in Bard's Tale matter. I'm like, every character I've ever finished the game with has finished with straight 18s. Mm -hmm. I've never finished the game without everybody being at full 18. Mm -hmm. So did it? Like, they might have had a little harder time in the beginning, but yeah i've never found a set of stats that doesn't right because it's bard's tale <laughs> right so i don't yeah. know yeah that's that was what i wanted to ask about that uh yeah i don't know I, I instructions be... what do you think of the instructions oh yeah uh again no no plot in there at all okay. just like you can you can sense that that was something written in someone's bedroom mm -hmm. you know like uh it's it's not very rich on lore but pretty effective yeah it helps you out it gives you some tips you know mm -hmm. it's, it's a reasonably good instruction manual yeah you, you have to look at it yes for the spell lists you know and to kind of understand what the classes do and some stuff like yeah, that. yeah right yeah um any other thoughts about the game before i go to like pinnacle and pit or are you no okay no i think i'm good yeah i can't think of anything else i want else to want to talk about this uh i did want to um oh i know what i wanted to talk about So somebody on the, I forgot who, I'm sorry, on the, the tutorial video mm -hmm. talked about how when they played this back in the day, they bounced off it. Like they just didn't make a connection to this game mm -hmm. versus like Bard's Tale. 
did you feel the same way like you just don't have the same level of connection to the world and the characters and stuff no i connected with this reasonably well i cared about my characters i you know i was invested in them i think this game takes longer to get there i think pretty quick in bard's tale like you like it's and it's because you don't see the tavern keep you don't see the well in the thing you don't see the statue picture mm -hmm. come up you just get a piece of text for it i mean eventually you start to like feel the personality of the world but it's not something that jumps out at you it takes a long time that's incredibly true it does the world does feel kind of soulless in a way that bard's tale didn't right bard's tale you know i wouldn't felt... say soulless as much as indifferent it doesn't care about you yeah yeah i think that's accurate i i, I can i can connect with with that comment uh but i i i did kind of like pretty pretty quickly i, I yeah. cared about my party and like you know yeah for me it was is definitely in the beginning it wasn't something like that town like uh what's the first town you start in sorpagal sorpagal thank you i was thinking of thessalonica and i'm like you're in bard's tale too you're getting your you're getting your <laughs> yeah. towns crossed because of this um Like, the town didn't feel special to me. Mm -hmm. And then Portsmouth didn't feel special to me. But as time went on, Dusk feels different than Sorpagal, feels different than Portsmouth. I can start to feel the game come through it, but it took a while of playing to get there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the dungeons all kind of look the same. But again, like, they, the, the crazed wizard's cave does have a different feel than the one under Sorpagal. Yes. Because there's like, it's interesting. There's like an arena under Sorpagal mm -hmm. and uh, the the flavor and yeah. the kind of traps and stuff in the crazed wizard's hole yeah. that he lives in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it has a different feel because it seems like he's a crazed wizard yeah just and definitely because of the a crazed shit wizard because like it's like you kill everybody in the dungeon you get to him and he's like you did it have you killed all my pets have some <laughs> right meat. and i'm like right what tab is this the guy from questron you killed all the guards <laughs> in my castle welcome to the next stage of the journey <laughs> good job good job i say <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah we do resurrections here i don't care if you kill all the guards i'll just pop them right. back Mezron resurrects you from halfway across the world. What do I care? <laughs> right. Mezron uh, should have just done all that shit himself. Right? Jesus. Anyway. anyway. All right. Pinnacle and Pit. To me, the, the best session I had playing this game was the one... I, I did what I always do. Threw myself into it thinking I didn't need the manual. Uh, was not doing things wisely so i stopped i figured out the spells better i figured out the resting better and then i got into just a really good grind and i like found that i had multiple levels worth of xp stored up and like that was oh, a good time man yeah because i just like i had just oh. been like kind of flailing around and and it i was like okay i get it and i think probably the the pit i would say the, I, I was so annoyed by the hallway of endless encounters <laughs> that it's it's like such a a death lord fuck you yeah i i again like and that's it fucks the game with you and your perspective like that mm -hmm. is deliberately designed to mess with people like you who are not really seeing what's happening to their character movement right yeah. Do you want to describe what that is, or do you want me to? Yeah, you just, you like, it tells you. So mm -hmm. that's nice, because yeah. Death Lord would just not tell you. <laughs> but it's like, hey, it's, it's the Hallway of Endless Encounters, and you go down it, and it is, in fact, as advertised, mm -hmm. which I don't find that objectionable, but I think you have to get through it by yep. jumping, right? Yep. You jump through it, and then you're then you're done. That, to me, takes it up a notch too shitty 
So, because like you want to throw me in this hallway and let me throw myself at it, like fine, but don't make me yeah. get all the way through it. So yeah, basically you go down the hall, you hit the first encounter, and it you it have to have the you, you don't have to have the encounter technically, but you have the encounter and it sets you back a step. And if you go forward again, it just keeps doing that and we'll do it forever. And you got to jump it, take a step forward, jump the next encounter, then you got to take two steps forward and jump an encounter. It's not the same rhythm. And right. You have to like figure that out. That, that to me is the kind of wizardry bullshit that drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things like that. There are mm -hmm. some absolute, like in that same dungeon, there is a lever. And if you don't find it, whatever hall you go down, it grabs you and slides you. Right. And you just watch your characters move at hyper speed and then get slammed into an encounter with acid blobs. Mm -hmm. And you got to walk your way out. But if you step on the slide again on your way out, right back you go. And that one's sneaky because, like, that's was one of – you find that pretty early in the really game. Really early in, yeah. Yeah. And it's just, like, mean-spirited. Mm -hmm. And the thing, the thing that I object to about that <laughs> – Chris, <laughs> yes, is that it? It requires it. It requires you to under to like uh, uh, congeal your understanding of the mechanics of the hallway in order to beat it. Mm -hmm. Because like a hallway of endless encounters, okay, like it's an endless hallway of encounters. Not it's a square that teleports you back. Right. It should have been, if if you had told me that, it would have changed my perception, and then I would have more right. quickly realized, okay, I, I just do. have to jump these bullshit squares. Mm -hmm. So I find that objectionable. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's sort of a misnamed. It's technically correct, but not correct in the spirit of what it's saying it is. Right. Yeah. No, that's hilarious. I love that. Uh, Put another switch and let me turn it off, and then, yeah, you know, or give me give me a secret door around it, or right, yeah, but yeah, no, you actually have to have the spell to get down it, right? And there are several places in that where if you just don't have the thing to get down there, tough, yeah, just straight up tough. Um, there is no alternate solution to the puzzle. You can teleport, you can phase door and walk through, or you can jump over the encounters. And at the skill level you'll be when you go into that maze, it's a jump spell. And it's not the first time they put you in a hallway where there's an encounter at every step. Like right. that happens a few times. So mm -hmm. it happens, I think in, even under Sorpogal, there's a hallway where it's just like encounter after encounter after encounter that yeah. you get through. Or maybe, I don't know where that is. It isn't, but, it's under Sorpogal, it's you go down the stairs and you go left of the left door. door yeah yeah there's a series of porticolises and in front of each one is a encounter yeah so that like makes it a little extra shitty in my opinion yeah no because each it goes back to with a lot of old games but especially this one the world is the opponent Mm -hmm. the world is the boss you're trying to beat and you beat it by understanding it not by killing it with anything but just by learning its secrets and figuring out how the crazy bastard put it together yep and sometimes that's fun and sometimes it's a mislabeled hallway of endless encounters <laughs> right and if you if you get the map spell out like you know yeah it, it doesn't lie to you mm -mm. Like, it'll tell you that it teleported you back, and then, of course, you'll know, and then you can go from there. But Right. You, well, obviously, like you said, you can you jump it. I didn't tell you that you had to jump it. You're like, i got to jump these stupid things. I'm like, So you figured it out. Mm -hmm. You know, it just sucked figuring it out. It's like, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. But then once you see something like that, you can start recognizing it in other places, and you're like, oh, right, I know right. This doing. is one of those fuck you games. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so this is this is how it's going to be. Right, but to me, the difference between that and some of the other games is that hallway of endless encounters doesn't end your game. It doesn't kill you. It's just annoying until you figure it out. And you don't even have to do that mm -hmm. cave. I don't think to beat the game, if I remember, or. 
what what do you you get a key there that unlocks something in another oh, engine but that's right the truth is like i think most of the quest up to the end quest doesn't need to be done you could probably jump ahead and just solve like the last quest or two mm -hmm. and finish the game i'd I have to I look read... again it's been a long time but i th i think you can get that key elsewhere maybe 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 because i looked after if not you can eventually just get a wizard a high enough level look at your map to where you haven't gone and go teleport right. teleport and just, just yep. go right in there and then get me there yeah yeah that's the thing once you have those movement spells yep it's wide open so like raising stats in this game there's like one square for every stat that will raise it plus five Mm -hmm. And then you go, you talk to these people on this something of judgment, and then you can go back and do it again. So you can technically keep raising. Mm -hmm. But, like, there were a lot of dungeons where, like, okay, oh, I found the dungeon that has these things in it, because I still have my maps. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, a boop, get my thing, boop, go get my mm -hmm. thing, and I just skip the rest of the dungeon. I'm like, there's nothing else in here I need. Right. There's a dungeon with a fountain where if you throw in all the gold, it turns it into XP. And like you're talking about, your relationship with gold changes. So eventually you have more gold than you'll ever use. Mm -hmm. So you just go and just like, boom, 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 boom. I'll take a Turn level. Turn it into please. levels. Yeah. Just, just keep enough that you can pay the trainer. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I got to pay the trainer. And trainers get expensive, man. Yeah, they do. But it's fine. What do you feel about training? For levels as opposed to just getting them i i like it uh it, it is an it's annoying but it it adds something to it because like i i was at a place cause, and you don't stop accumulating xp right so that makes it okay to me right because i i was like oh shit like i can level up i missed leveling up uh but I couldn't afford it, so I had to like go grind up gold. Yeah. And like I like the grind in this in this mm -hmm. game. So, what was your peak and pit, or and what did you think of it? Uh, I like the the I the, I have mixed feelings on the training to level up thing always, uh, mm -hmm. but I think for the most part I liked it in this game. I felt like it's a solid part of the game and and keeps the game interesting without being obnoxious. Because like you said, it doesn't knock you out of anything uh i think my peak was for me this time through it was just seeing all the stuff again going back and realizing that this was a game that my nostalgia was exactly what i thought it was like i yeah. didn't I, I didn't come out of here liking it less or liking it more i like it mm -hmm. exactly as much as i liked it going in um right. my pit is i never because of what i just said i'm never really gonna get to do this again for the first time yeah i'm yep. never going to have that which you had of like i flailed around and then i figured some stuff out and things mm -hmm. clicked together and i liked the click together and then i had other problems i'm never right you just like no i, I fly i teleport yeah. I fly, I teleport, here's where the gold dragons live. Right. I yeah. gotta kill a bunch of them, get some stuff. This is gonna be about the best stuff in the game. Uh, right. Playing through it multiple times, because the exploration is the point, mm -hmm. loses some impact. I'm not saying it's not fun. Yeah. And I hand to God, after seeing some of the comments this week, someone's gonna go, it's still fun to play again listen to what i just said <laughs> i didn't mm -hmm. say it's not fun it's not as fun as your first time yeah because like when you jump into a teleporter not knowing where it's going to take you that's exciting right it's it annoys me but it is exciting because it's like it's going to look different i'm not going to know where i am i'm going to have to like could be over my head could be right. and that's an experience could For be in sure. the town that punishes males. Did you find that town? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the games... The game plays with all the levers. 
everything you think might be not important mm-hmm. it it checked everything you pick on your character at some point to do something with so yeah yeah so. i think that's about it for might and magic yeah i think so too um what do we got next what do we got next let's pull up the short game what do we have next let's keep it grammatically correct well you yeah make a pickle wars trilogy uh yes, trilogy short this game. is our short game uh yeah <laughs> we're playing it <laughs> we're playing pickle wars baby we'll, we'll uh, talk about it long game with our therapist yeah yep. the therapist <laughs> No spoilers, Matt. No spoilers. Yeah. Long game. Sim City. Sim City. This is gonna be a First cakewalk. One. Yeah. I love Sim City. <laughs> it's. Just, I know. It's. I know. Okay. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it because obviously it's not a game with like a plot or a thing, but I do think we're gonna need to spend a month having yeah. Godzilla stomp through our cities and tornadoes go through to really. Yeah. Get a firm feeling on how we feel about the Sims of the city. Right. Because yep. now, I know you and I played 2000 a lot. Oh, yeah. But the An first one's amount. different. Like... <laughs> yeah. We're, we're definitely going to have some There will be some complete contrast. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, all right. That's it, everybody. Thanks. Thank we'll you. Live streaming soon. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support. Look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.